Let's just get him in. <laughs> Deep cranking, guys. I love it. I love it. I've been wanting to do this video for so long, and I finally found some decent fish. Man, let me get this out of the sun and show you this fish. <laughs> oh! Finally, finally, finally found some decent fish cranking deep. So let's uh, let's talk about it. I'm gonna go through the ins and outs of what I know. Um, and uh, hopefully by the end of this video, you'll know a little bit more than I do. We'll see. <laughs> Get my pliers. All right, well, let's talk about the equipment that I use when I'm deep cranking. First of all, the rod. Um, a crankbait rod, a deep diving crankbait rod, uh, shouldn't be so stiff that you, when you set the hook, you rip the fish's, uh, you know, rip the hook out of the hooks out of the fish's mouth, um, and uh, and it should be limber enough to where, if the fish, when the fish is close to the boat and if it lunges that that rod is able to absorb that lunge and still keep your line tight but the main thing about a good crankbait rod you want it limber enough to be able to launch these big crankbaits it's got to be able to load up so you've got I want to bend in about if I pull that tight enough in about two-thirds of the of the rod and then I want a good solid backbone so I can get those big hooks buried in that fish and uh, this is a seven foot, six inch. I like a seven six all the way to an eight foot rod. Um, I mean, it, it really does help just to be able to just crank back and launch them because you want the longest cast that you possibly can get with a deep diving crankbait. The reel that I use is a five to one gear ratio. It can be a five one to one, five two to one, five three to one, you get the point. Just a five, uh, five to one gear ratio and the reason is is because that big old bill causes a lot of drag and uh, that uh, the drag can really uh, from that crankbait can really wear you out through the day makes it just a whole lot easier to crank plus I think that a high speed reel when you're trying trying to crank deep and you're trying to crank fast eventually you get so much turbulence on that crankbait that as you're as you're trying to go really fast it actually is counterproductive and it causes the turbulence behind that bait causes that bait to come up higher so you're not getting your maximum depth um, for that crankbait. The line I use, you know, there's a huge debate about that. Uh, monofilament, fluorocarbon, braid, whatever. Uh, personally, I like what I've always used is copolymer. Uh, I don't need a whole lot of stretch in the line because my rod does a lot of that work. But a lot of people say that you have to have line that has a stretch. You know, basically what I say is find what works for you. Monofilament, copolymer, or fluorocarbon is what I would recommend. I love the fluorocarbon because you're, you can feel everything that that bait hits. Uh, but it's expensive. Uh, and I go through a lot of line with my deep diving or my crankbait rods. So I prefer a little bit cheaper line that does to me does just as good. And so what I'm throwing is I'm throwing an Iserline copolymer. This is in 10 pound test. Uh, for deep diving, I do 10 or 12 pound test line. Uh, if I'm in heavier cover or catching bigger fish, I'll go up. But as you go up in line size, you lose depth. It's not a whole lot, of, uh, you know, a foot, a foot and a half, um, but uh, you, you lose depth. And I like to be able to get the maximum depth out of it, after, out of my crankbaits most of the time. Um, you know, there's certain instances where you don't really, you know, where you want to get a big crankbait that that swims a little bit higher, swims up above the grass. I don't worry about that so much, at least not right now. We talked about the rod, the reel, the line. Um, whether to tie directly to the to the crankbait or not, you know, or use a, a, a clip or a, a swivel or whatever else. For deep diving crankbaits, I like to tie directly to the line, to the, um, to the uh, split ring that's on the crankbait. One, and because I don't want to spend a whole lot of time pulling split rings off, and two, because I just think it's more secure. Uh, so tied directly to the split ring. I mean, you're, you're beating the snot out of this thing. It's banging the bottom. Ooh, is that hydrilla? Ah, I found a patch of hydrilla. Um, 
you, you know, you're beating the crap out of the bottom. Uh, you're banging it into things. You're catching big fish on this 10 pound test. You don't want anything that's going to have any chance of damaging your line or causing issues with the, you know, with the action or anything else. So I just tied tie directly to the, to the split ring. All right. So as you can see, one of these large lakes and these really large lakes can be very confusing when you're looking for specific things. So what am I looking for? I'm looking for long points. So I'm going to go and study my map and I'm going to look everywhere and see which part of the lake has the most long points, you know, which part of the main lake or, you know, and then I just kind of pick an area and I'm not looking for the most long points. I'm just looking for a lot of them. So the, the kind of long points I'm talking about are these long tapering points. This one actually has a hump on top of it. May or may not be good, you know. You don't know until you go fish them. Skinny points. Here's, these aren't so skinny. There's a area between the, the lake and a point, or the, the shore and a point, and an island. Point right here, that's a little steep. So I'm looking for an area, and there's, I know where there's one, I'm going to go to it right here. Okay, this creek right here has a bunch of long tapering points. One here, one here, one there, one here, you know, and as you zoom into some of these points, a lot of them have high spots. And I'm just going to go and crank this point. Going to start here, cast across, cast across, cast across. I'm going to really work each of these points really hard until I get bit. It's kind of the stuff I'm looking for. All right, so the, to me, one of the hardest things to do with a crankbait is fish grass because you want to, to really be able to control your depth and that takes a whole lot of, and something I'm not really good at, let's put it that way. Being able to figure out exactly what line size and how, where to hold the rod and exactly what crankbait and how to adjust it, you know, micro adjust the depth of, this, the, of the way the crankbait runs to make it tick the top of the grass. Because around here, I mean, we've got grass up high, we've got grass down low. It's just really hard to do uh, to, for me. So I don't really, I'm, I'm doing it today, but I'm, I'm getting lucky, really, because you see me pulling up a lot of grass each time I come up. But a uh, mixture of milfoil and hydrilla. Uh, but uh, it's difficult for me. So I, I, I typically like to crank uh, bare points. And I'm working my way out to the end of this point uh, to where it's, there's no grass or anything else. There's some good, good structure to, to crank, but... I keep pulling up grass, which means I'm diving a little too deep. But when you're fishing a point or fishing a, a, a piece of structure that doesn't have any grass, you want that bait to get down to the bottom and beat the snot out of the bottom. Um, and you want to get down there as quickly as you can. So, for instance, if I'm fishing 16 feet deep, I want a bait that dives 20 feet deep. If I'm fishing 20 feet deep, I want a bait that dives at least 25 feet deep. And those are rare and, you know, few and far between. The man 20, uh, 20 plus, the man's bait 20 plus, the, uh, I've got a 10XD and an 8XD tied onto a rod here. Um, and, and that's, you know, I, that's basically what I want to do is I want to get that bait down to the bottom and I want to bump the bottom, boom, 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 boom. And sometimes they want it bumped fast, which I call digging ditches. And sometimes they want it finesse, which is you get it down to the bottom and you just it, it, you treat it like a, uh, a bait fish is feeding off of the bottom, if that makes sense. So in other words, you know, a lot of people say, get it out there, crank it really fast to get it to the bottom. But really what you want to do is you just want to speed it up just a little bit. The, like I said, the faster you crank it, you create turbulence and it does not get down there the fastest. Then once you feel it hitting the bottom, you slow way down. And what that does is it causes it, and you can stop and go and whatever, but it causes that bait to go poop, 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 and just kind of hit the bottom, and it looks like a bait fish feeding on the bottom. A lot of times you get hit doing that, especially if you're coming across rocks or places where the bass are actually hanging out. So other ways to fish it, you know, cast it out. And then... Say, for instance, I'm cranking down, I'm on my way down and I get bit, like on the first four, five, six, seven turns. Uh, from then on, I'll actually, or from then until they, they tell me otherwise, I'll be popping it, you know, and letting it sit as I'm on the way down. It, it doesn't get down to the bottom as fast, but it just means to mean they're fishing. 
they're fishing up. Fishing. <laughs> they're feeding up. So I want to fish up above them a little bit. I'm getting a little deeper. This one dies, well, 16 to 20. You know, and I'm sitting at 16 feet. So I'm going to go to a crankbait that dives a little deeper. This is a 10, this is an 8XD. I think it gets down to at least 20 feet. I haven't written the, the depth on it yet, but uh, I usually write the depths of all of my crankbaits. This is a new crankbait. Right here under the lip, I'll take a, a little uh, sharpie, a little fine sharpie, and write the how deep it runs. Just takes the guesswork out of it. All right, now boat positioning is pretty critical, okay? The boat positioning that you, you got to realize when you make that cast, and that's the reason why you, this is the reason why you want a really long cast, but when you make that cast, that bait, that bait is going to reach its maximum depth in the last third of your cast, not the first two thirds, the last third of your cast. So you want to position your boat if you're, if you're trying to hit something that's at that bait's maximum depth, you want to position your boat to where your target is in that last third. So it's fairly close to the boat. You know, I'll be fishing a roadbed here in about 50 feet. And, uh, and I want the lip of that road bed to be right there. I don't want it out there, I want it right there. This crankbait, when you throw it out there, is your eyes. This ain't like fishing the shallow part or fishing shallow where you can see everything. You wanna be able to feel with that crankbait. And so you wanna get that crankbait down there to your spot and just bang the crap out of that, out of that, that structure, be it a drop off, a lip, a road bed or anything else, a rock. You know, a lot of times you hit that one spot and that'll be the trigger mechanism for the fish that are down there. Okay, so boat positioning. Very key. Any doubt whether I'm hitting bottom or not? Look at the lip on that crankbait. It's got mud on it. <laughs> it's kind of what I want to see because I know I'm down there. That time, I hit a brush pile. I thought for sure that was a hit. That was a strike. So one of the pieces of equipment that I keep on my boat <laughs> when I'm cranking is a plug knocker. Lure retriever. This one just happens to be the, it's called a Tipton's Golden Retriever or something like that. I got a, a, a video on how to use it. I found that brush pile or stump. Boy, it felt like a hit. I lost contact with the bait. And there's fish on it too. Daggummit. That's right where I wanted to hit too. A good lure retriever is worth every penny. And I ain't kidding. Sometimes you can get them out. Or most of the time you can get them out. Sometimes you can't. But very rarely do I not get the bait out with this lure retriever. That's why I have it. Worth every bit of that $25. Just save me a $15 crankbait. A lot of people will go and graph over top of, zigzag back and forth over top of a point before they turn around and fish. I don't really like to do that uh, very much unless I'm just not fishing and I'm more looking uh, for something maybe the next day or something for later that afternoon. But uh, I like to just stop and fish it. I mean, this is a major point, real long, slow tapering point with a road bed on it, goes out into the creek channel or into the river channel. 
And so it's an ideal spot. So I'm not going to stop and graph it. I'm going to stop and fish it and I'm going to fish it hard. I'm going to start shallow. I'm going to go deep. I'm going to fish all the way around it until I start hitting things like I just hit that one spot. Just so happens that that one spot I hit was the edge of the roadbed. And the top of that spot was 15 feet deep. So I switched back to my, uh, my 6XD so I could bump that a little bit better and not get it buried in whatever's on the edge of that, that roadbed. And then after I'm done fishing it, after I've thoroughly covered it with a crankbait, I will, uh, that's when I'll motor up and I'll graph over top of it, see if there's anything I missed, mark things and really pay more attention to what's down there. But uh, for me, man, I just like to catch the fish that I know that, that are on there. You know, it's just, they've, they've got to be here because this is such an ideal point. You know, the things I look for is I look for those long tapering points, especially early in the summer into the late summer, points that go all the way out into deep water. Um, as the, the bass just hang out there all day long looking for, uh, there's some striper schooling. Anyway, just lost my concentration. Just sitting there waiting for the bait fish to swim by so they can go up and eat them. So that's basically... All I look for when I'm deep cranking, that and humps, you know, cranking big humps and things like that in the summertime. Okay, you guys noticed that I threw that marker buoy out after I got bit. I wanted to mark exactly where the boat was, and I think a fish got off, but I wanted to mark exactly where the boat was when I got that bite, okay? It wasn't a very big fish, but uh, that way I can line back up. I remember exactly where that cast was. I can make that same exact cast bring them back down and see if there's a school of fish because this is the kind of place we're off the end of this point kind of place that the fish school up and it was as soon as i hit whatever that piece of structure is down there and i think it's the lip of that road bed or it's part of the road bed or something as soon as i got bit first thing i did oh first thing i did was i looked to the horizon to get a mark and I, there's a little red bank right there and I know that was exactly the direction I casted threw that marker buoy out so I could have a lineup could get put my boat right back where it was and made that cast one more time and I hit the edge of that roadbed and there's stumps along it evidently or something and uh, got hung up but got structure down there something the fish can hold on so let's go get this unhung First cast with that 10XD. I just hope whatever that little thing is stays on. Stay down. Because it ain't big. But as soon as it hit the bottom, it hit. I don't know, he might be good sized. Nah. He's decent though. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that fish, man. <laughs> See now, as I get deeper, let me get the sun out of the background. As I get deeper, um, I like to go with more chartreuse, white, solid colors. You know, look at that, you know, nice tournament fish, two and a half pounds, something like that. <laughs> hey, I'm going to hang that back in so I can get a good pretty picture because this may be the only uh, uh, look at that awesome, awesome alright, let me throw it back in there see if I can catch another one a lot of times when you're deep deep cranking um, 
you can get right back in there. If they release that fish, they'll right back out. You may have found a school and you may have turned the entire school on. And it's after that, it's one cast after the other, after the other, after the other. But because I'm making a video and wanted to get a pretty picture, I got myself offline. Now I gotta, I gotta go find my spot again. All right, now this 10XD, because it's such a big crankbait, because it's so heavy, I, I've, upped, I've upped the power of everything. I'm throwing it on 15 pound test copolymer. I've got a medium heavy rod on, not a medium heavy moderate, medium heavy fast action rod. You know, I run the chance of losing more fish, but um, it's, you know, it's just too heavy for a moderate action rod. It loads up too much. Well, the, uh, I guess the reason why a lot of people don't crank deep and don't, you know, don't throw deep diving crankbaits because it takes a lot of, um, commitment you really you have to go out there if you really want to learn how to how to how to deep crank first of all you got to know how to read a lake map uh, you've got to be able to find those long points and then you've got to be willing to spend the time to get to know the crankbait you know get to know how everything feels and how everything casts and so on and so forth you know the majority of, of fishermen are bank beaters the majority of fishermen, they may know how to throw a square bill crankbait, some of the shallow diving, lipless crankbaits and things like that. But to get those people out into the deep water to, to fish deep and to find those deep spots, it takes a lot of work. And a lot of them, to be honest with you, a lot of uh, fishermen are, uh, are lazy. You know, I'm not calling everybody lazy, but there's a lot of them that just, you know, they're, they're satisfied with staying on the bank. They won't, don't want to take the, the time and the effort that, that it takes to get out here and go fishing. So. Um, so what I would suggest is that you, you take nothing but deep diving crankbaits one day, you know, from now through the rest of the summer and go out and beat the snot out of some long points, uh, that are on the main, main lake. You know, the, our water temperature today is in the low eighties. Uh, it's, it's been steadily climbing. The thermocline hadn't, hadn't quite showed up yet. You know, it's, it's there, but it's real shallow. But the, the bass are, are very happy down there in, in 15, 20 foot of water. And so, go out, take nothing but deep diving crankbaits, several different colors, sizes, anything that runs from, you know, 12 out to 25 feet deep. You know, my, I consider deep diving crankbaits 10 to 25 or on out, as far as you, deep as you can get them. I think 25 or 30 is about as deep as you can get a crankbait, unless you make, you know, do what's called strolling, which is where you let the, make a cast and then get on your trolling motor and let the line out and make it, you know, go another couple two three hundred yards out and then start cranking you know it and it'll your your bait will get down to that maximum depth uh depending on what bait it is but anyway get out there go fishing with it it's it, it's got to you you got to commit to it for a day or two or three or like me a month um you know the reason you haven't seen a whole lot of fishing videos is because i've been getting ready to do crankbait videos this year and i'm not uh, in my mind, I'm not that good at crankbaits. It's something I'm really working hard at, and uh, and I have the confidence in it. I just don't do it enough. And so these the, this video gave me the chance to to learn deep diving crankbaits, and that's why I'm teaching you. All right, let's talk a little bit more about the rod that um, that you use when you deep cranking. A lot of people say a all glass rod. You know, to me, I feel like a, one of those really what I call a noodle rod, the ones that flex all the way down the whole stinking rod, and you know it's. 100% fiberglass. Um, I, I think that with these heavier crankbaits, they, it loads up too much. Um, and you, because of, let me, let me show you this, for instance, this 8XD. This 8XD, look at the size of the hooks on these things. These are not little bitty light wire hooks. You need a backbone in your rod to be able to drive those hooks home. You don't want so much backbone. You don't want to fish it on a heavy action rod, but you don't want so much backbone that it uh, that the fish never gets in his mouth. It tears, you know, tears holes in the mouth in their mouth big enough to for the bait to get out. You know, they can gain a lot of leverage on these big old baits. So you kind of need a lot uh, some flex, but you don't want it throughout the whole length of the rod. You want some backbone to be able to set that hook. Um, so, you know, a medium, medium heavy. Uh, Moderate action rod is good. A, a medium heavy rod is decent. You know, when you get into the heavier ones like this, the 10XD, 10XD, I like the medium heavy, uh, basically my jig rod, uh, the one I use for light wire jigs. 
it, it works great for that. You, just, you know, I'm, I'm, I've already caught one fish on it today. Um, so, and say you catch, you catch a fish on a spot and you catch another fish on a spot and then you don't catch another one. A lot of times if you just change your, your, the angle that you're casting at. So if you're, you're throwing straight out in front of you, you know, reposition the boat and get over on the other side and throw opposite direction or throw at a 45 degree angle from where you were throwing before, but still try to hit that same spot and you'll likely trigger another bite if there's another fish there. Um, leave and come back and then hit it with a, from a different angle. It's, it, the fish are not going to move far. They're going to stay right there where they're at. So it's good to, uh, to be able to try it or to try the point or try that, that specific spot on the point from, from different angles. The, the, the crankbait colors that I choose when I'm, uh, when I'm fishing deep, you know, a lot of it depends on the, uh, the water clarity. But for the most part, if I'm fishing deeper than 15 feet deep, I want a crankbait that has some chartreuse in it. Bluegills have chartreuse. Shad have chartreuse in them and everything else. And, and you're looking for a reaction bite anyway. I try to steer clear of the clear, clear, of the clear colors. Um, and so I'm looking for things that have a little chartreuse in them or a little yellow, a little blue, solid colors uh, that get down there and, you know, it's pretty dark down there for the most part. You know, the other colors I throw, this one, you know, this one's one of my favorites. It's got a chartreuse line in it. You know, you know I don't pay much attention to the belly color unless it's, you know, well, I, I just don't pay too much attention to the colors much at all. You know, solid colors, shad patterns, bluegill patterns, um, and uh, and you should be just fine. Don't over complicate the whole process. It's uh, you know you're looking for reaction for reaction strikes. Bass is sitting there on a stump. You bump the stump and it's going to grab it. It doesn't you know it looks like it might be something good to eat, and, and they don't have hands to say oh what in the heck is this? You know they're going to grab it with their mouth, and by the time they realize that it's not really a bait fish, they've got a couple sets of treble hooks in their mouth. So. Keep your colors simple. Don't break the bank going out and filling your crank, your tackle boxes with big old crankbaits. First of all, they're not going to fit anyway. I had to buy a whole new box for those XD, 8 and 10 XDs. Incredible. Now, say you're deep cranking in open water. Now, this happened to me at Gunnersville a few years ago on, on a, a trip that I, was on, I, I thought I was on. These bass were suspended and feeding out in front of a bridge. And... Uh, and I found that I couldn't get, they were suspended. So if I threw a, a bait that hit the bottom, it was underneath them. So I would, I figured out they were 15 feet deep. I put on a, a 6XD, threw it out, threw it through the school. And as I was pulling through the school, I was pumping my rod. I was just going dragging and stopping, dragging and stopping, picking up slack. And I'd get bit a lot. <laughs> I caught a lot of really good fish doing that. And it's because they were suspended. So if you're fishing with for suspended fish, you want to ch you still want a deflection, but you can't deflect it off anything. So you change your speed, change your action, move your rod. I don't do a whole lot of popping. I, I've found that it, that really doesn't work as effective as just pulling, pausing, pulling, pausing, and then picking up your slack, and you'll get bit on that pause or right when you start back to pulling. So, that's another thing I do. All right, so if you, if you wanna get out there and you wanna learn deep diving crankbaits, you gotta do your homework. You've gotta pull out a lake map or pull it up on, on uh, the Navionics uh, web app or something, pull out a lake map, find those long points, mark them on your GPS, mark them on your map, and go fish them. You've gotta spend the time at home doing your homework. So, so your time on the water, is a lot more productive. Then get out there and fish those points. Make 200 casts on a point. Don't be afraid to just chunk and wind all day long. Get home and want to take a nap, you know, but go out and hit those points, uh, hit one after the other after the other, and eventually you're going to find a point that is loaded with fish and you're going to start to gain confidence in those deep diving crankbaits. And, and what a satisfaction you get from being able to get out there in the middle of the flipping lake and catch fish when everybody else is beating the bank. So, like I always say, uh, be sure to take somebody fishing. Introduce them to this wonderful sport that we all enjoy. And, uh, and then uh, introduce them to my videos and let me help you teach them how to fish. Get out on the water, go out and catch some fish, 
and have some fun. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and, uh, and support my sponsors. Thanks. Bye.